today's topic is going to be the topic of estimation of parameters, errors and least square fit and this will be the last topic in module 1, the next lecture I will be doing practice problems. So, what do we mean by estimation of parameters? I mean I, this is a very general terminology that is used in a lot of different contexts. Now, uh, in fact, uh, what I have said is that when we calculate things like average and standard deviation of a certain set of data, then uh, this is something that we are implicitly doing. We are estimating the parameters of the overall distribution, assuming some form of distribution. For example, you might be assuming a Gaussian distribution. So, the Gaussian, so, so if you assume that your data is distributed as a Gaussian, then uh, the Gaussian distribution has the parameters. This is the average. and this is the standard deviation. So, so these are parameters of the distribution. So, the distribution P of x has these two parameters x0 which is the average and sigma which is a standard deviation. And so, the when we are calculating averages of certain data, you can implicitly assume that what you are doing is you are trying to estimate x0, you are trying to get an estimator of x0. Okay. So, suppose you have a set of outcomes, let us say x1, x2, x3 up to xn, you just have a finite number of n experiments. Okay. Then based on these n experiments, you are trying to estimate the true average, okay, which is what appears in the distribution and you are trying to estimate the true, true value of sigma. So, this is one way of uh, stating the problem, so that the idea of estimation of parameters becomes clear. Okay. So, the it turns out that uh, the usual procedure of estimating okay, turns out to be the best estimate. So, so, so here I put x0 hat to distinguish from x0, okay, just to remind you x0 is something that appears in the actual distribution. So, x0 and sigma are the ones that appear in the actual distribution and uh, what we are trying to say is uh, we are taking a finite number of points and we are trying to estimate x0 and we are trying to estimate sigma based on these finite number of points. And uh, it turns out that uh, through very formal methods, you can show that the best estimate, best estimate of x0 so, the estimator of x0, the best estimate is the average of these quantities and the best estimator of sigma square, okay, which is the square of the standard deviation or the variance. So, the best estimator of that turns out to be this form. So, you take x1 minus average of x, average of x calculated in this form and you square it and go all the way and you divide by n minus 1. So, you take x1 minus x bar square plus x2 minus x bar square and so on you do for all the n data points, you take the difference from the calculated average and you divide by n minus 1. Okay. Now, it might always be uh, a little uh, confusing as to why this n minus 1 factor appears when you are calculating the standard deviation and uh, this actually turns out to be a very, uh, the factor of n minus 1 in the, in the denominator, it is actually essential to make this what is called an unbiased estimator. Okay. So, uh, if you take n, then formally it becomes a biased estimator, but uh, so formally you should take n minus 1. Of course, if your n is very large, then n and n minus 1 are almost the same, so it does not matter, but uh, formally this should be n minus 1 in order to make this an unbiased estimator. So, uh, again let me emphasize that we are differentiating we are putting a hat on top of x0 or uh, all these hats that are there on top of x0 and, and uh, sigma square. These emphasize that these are estimators. So, x0 hat refers to an estimator of x0. Similarly, sigma square hat refers to an estimator of sigma square. Okay. And uh, this is not the same as x0 this is not the same as sigma square. Okay. So, sigma square is something that appears in the actual distribution and so does x0, something that appears in the actual distribution and they should be distinguished from the estimators of, of these quantities. 
Okay. So, now let us come to this, uh, we said that the factor of n minus 1 in the denominator is essential to make sigma square an unbiased estimator. Okay. And uh, we want, we will see that, we will see why that is so in a, in a few minutes. But uh, before that, uh, let us define this quantity called the expectation value. So, the expectation value of any, of any quantity or a function is based on the true distribution. So, suppose f of x is some function of x okay. and x, the quantity, the variable x, the random variable x is distributed according to p of x. Okay. So, if p of x is the distribution of x and f of x is some function of x, then what is the expectation value of f of x? And that is given by this integral. So, you integrate f of x p of x dx from minus infinity to infinity. Here I have taken the specific case where the range of x is minus infinity to infinity and I have also considered the specific case where x is a continuous variable. You can do this for a discrete variable also where you would not have an integral, but you will have a sum in the case of discrete variables. So, suppose you had discrete variables, then, then what you would have is uh, this estimator of f of x would look like, would look like sum over j equal to 1 to all the allowed values. Uh, if you, you might go all the way to infinity and what you will have is uh, p of x j times f of x j. So, it would look like that. Okay. So, in the case of discrete, you will have uh, instead of having an integral, you will have a sum and everything will, will work out exactly the same way. Okay. Similarly, now let us look at the estimator of sigma square, we said is x 1 minus x 1 bar square x 2 minus x 2 bar square, x bar square and so on. Notice again that I have used x bar and not x 0. x bar is the actual average that is calculated from the n readings. Okay. And we said that this, this should be divided by n minus 1. And uh, what you can say is that uh, what does it mean? I said a few minutes ago that uh, sigma square, this is an unbiased estimator. So, um, what does it mean to say that the estimator is unbiased? The estimator is unbiased if the expectation value of sigma square estimator, if the expectation value of the estimator is equal to the sigma square. So, the expectation value of the estimator of sigma square should be equal to sigma square, only then the estimator is said to be unbiased. Okay. So, now we can go ahead and we can calculate the expectation value of sigma square. So, uh, you can just go ahead and you can so, what we will try to prove is that the estimate, uh, the expectation value of the estimator of sigma square is equal to sigma square and that will make it an unbiased estimator. So, the proof of that is uh, not very difficult and so, for example, you can, this should be a square bracket. The estimator of, uh, so the estimator of uh, sigma square Again, I am using square brackets for the estimators. So, we will just be consistent. So, the estimator of uh, the expectation value of the estimator of sigma square, okay, that is given by 1 by n minus 1, the expectation value of this sum. So, so again, again just to remind, we had this uh, estimator of sigma. So, what we are asking is what is the expectation value of this quantity? That is same as expectation value of this quantity. Now, if you have a constant in the estimator, you can take it outside the estimator. And so, what we are left with is uh, exactly this quantity. So, the 1 minus m n I have taken outside and what I am left with is estimator of or the expectation value of all these things. Okay. So, now I can write that in short form as the sum over j equal to 1 to n, the expectation value of x j minus x bar square. And again, there is a property that the estimator of a sum of quantities is equal to the sum of estimators. So, I took the estimator inside the sum. So, I, I wrote it as estimator of this plus estimator of this plus estimator of this and so on. Okay. So, I can write the estimator of this sum of x j minus x bar square as the sum of the estimators. Okay. And what I do is I do a little trick. I write this as x j minus x 0 minus x bar minus x 0. So, I am adding and subtracting x 0. 
So, if you add an and subtract x 0 from this expression, then you can write it in this form. And uh, now, you can go ahead and uh, you need to, you can expand this square. So, if you expand the square, you will get 3 terms and uh, you can again take the, exp uh, the expectation value of, this of the sum as the sum of expectation values. Okay. And uh, after this, there are a few steps in this derivation. Okay. But basically, you can show that uh, this whole thing works out to n by n minus 1 times sigma square minus expectation value of x minus x 0 square of x bar minus x 0 square. x bar is the calculated average okay, and this is the true average. And uh, this quantity you can show is just sigma square by n. Okay. So, what you get is uh, n over n minus 1 times sigma square minus sigma square by n which comes out to be equal to sigma square. So, actually this factor of n minus 1 is uh, very important to make sure that expectation value of sigma square is equal to expectation value of the estimator of sigma square is equal to sigma square. Okay. There are a few steps in this derivation. So, I will just write, I will just write a note here that there are a few steps between these two, but uh, you can try to work it out and uh, you can look up standard reference books and this is worked out there. Okay. The point is uh, I want to make from this exercise is that uh, when you write your uh, expression for sigma square, there should be n minus 1 in the denominator and that is explained by this. Secondly, the idea that uh, by when you have a finite set of data, just by the process of calculating average and standard deviation, you are actually estimating the properties of the true distribution. So, this idea of estimation of parameters is something that is uh, in the background of what you do as a very normal course of action. Okay. Now, the next example where you are actually estimating parameters and again this is uh, something that is done as a very routine course of action. This is linear regression okay. and uh, you often do this in your especially during a laboratory experiment. So, what you might have is you might have a given set of values, you might have a set of values of some variable uh, which we call the independent variable which is x1, x2 up to xn and then you have uh, values of some dependent variable which we call y1, y2 up to yn. So, you have a table of data of x and y and you want to know what is the best fit of a certain of a function of a given form. Okay. So, suppose you have a data, you want to fit a straight line through it, that is a good example, that is a very common example. So, suppose your functional form is y equal to ax plus b. So, what is the best straight line fit through that data? So, then you want to ask what is the optimum value of a and b to fit this data. So, this a and b are parameters of the straight line. So, what is the best value of a and b that fits a certain data? And this is something all of you are used to doing. In fact, in fact, you are used to drawing graphs. For example, you might have done something like this where you have various data, data that you plot. So, this is x and y you plot and then and then and then and then you sort of draw a straight line through that data. And uh, so, the question is how do you choose how to draw the straight line? Should you draw it this way or should you draw it or should you draw it this way or should you draw it some other way? How do you decide? So, the best choice of the straight line fit through the data is what this question asks. Okay. But what is important to say here is that if you are just given data, then uh, you can fit it to a straight line, you can fit it to some parabola, you can fit it to an exponential, you can fit it to various functional forms. Okay. And this process of estimation of parameters will say that suppose I fit it to a certain form, what is the optimum value of parameters? So, given that you fit this data to the form y equal to ax plus b which is a straight line. So, given that you fit it to this form, okay, what is the best choice of a and b? So, this is what uh, is given by, by this idea of uh, regression analysis. Okay. And uh, as I said, a x plus b is just one functional form. I can take many different functional forms and I can fit the same data to that. The procedure will remain the same. I will just illustrate this procedure by taking this particular example. So, uh, how do you implement this procedure? So, according to this procedure, what you are supposed to do 
is to you choose values of a and b. So, you choose your a and b such that they minimize some error estimator. Okay. And uh, the I would not go into the details, but the error estimator that is minimized is given by delta square, which is a square error. So, what you do is you take y j that is y at a certain data point and you subtract it from a times x j, x j is the value of x at that point plus b okay? and you square this. Okay? So, if all the points were exactly on the straight line, then this, this would be exactly 0. Okay? But if the points are not on the straight line, then the, each of these would be non-zero. You square it, so you get a positive quantity. So, you sum all these, you will get some positive quantity. And what you try to do is you try to minimize this square error. Okay? That is a procedure. Now, what can you vary to minimize? You minimize it with respect to a and b. So, you choose your value of a and b, so that delta square is actually minimized. Okay? So, that is the formal solution. And uh, as I said, you can do this, uh, I am illustrating this for a linear fit where uh, y is uh, where I am fitting the data to a straight line. I could also do this for some other functional form and whatever the parameters of that function are, that is what will enter into this. So, if you want to minimize this quantity with respect to a and b, then you should have that uh, first derivative with respect to a and first derivative with respect to b, both should be 0. Okay? And uh, you can calculate the first derivatives by expanding these quantities and so, so on. I will not go into the details, but what these two will give you is these will give you two equations. So, this will give you one equation, this will give you another equation. So, each of these derivative conditions will give you an equation. So, the first equation I am writing in this form, I just uh, rearrange terms and I can write this as a times the sum over j equal to 1 of x j square. So, you sum the squares of all the values of x and then uh, you have a minus b times sum over j equal to 1 to n of x j okay? and this should be equal to sum over j equal to 1 to n of y j x j. Similarly, if you take a times sum over j equal to 1 to n of x j minus b times n, okay, then you should get sum over j equal to 1 to n of y j. So, it turns out you can work this out, I mean based on these conditions you can easily work out uh, both of these and I encourage, again I encourage all of you to work these steps. Okay? So, work, work this out. So, what you get from this is that you get two equations okay? and uh, you know all the xj's, you know all the yj's. So, you know all these sums, all these sums are known and so you just have two simultaneous equations for a and b and you can work out the values of a and b. So, you can solve these and you can get the values of a and b and this once you know the values of a and b, you know how to draw your line. Okay? So, this is a process of linear regression and as I stated, okay, I can take other functional forms. For example, I can take another functional form, for example, y equal to e to the a x. I can take a functional form like this and if I, if I want, I can put a b, b e to the a x. So, I can, I can do the same thing. I just replace instead of a x j plus uh, b, I will have uh, b e to the a x j and I can just go through the same exercise and I can get. Okay? So, you can apply this procedure to any function and uh, you need not have only two functions, you can have three functions. For example, you can have uh, y equal to, equal to a x square plus b x plus c. So, now you have three parameters. Okay. And you can fit, you can find the best, uh, best estimator of a, b and c okay, for this uh, given this data. Okay. So, this is a very powerful technique and uh, what you get is uh, you often have this data and once you calculate a and b, you know that a is an intercept and uh, or, or a is a slope and b is an intercept and so you know your line, you know your line and you will get some straight line fit through the data. Okay. You can also fit the data, you can take the same data and fit it to other functions. For example, I could fit this to a parabola and I might get something like this. So, what the estimation of parameters or linear regression will tell you is, what is the best choice of parameters for a given functional form? So, suppose you want to fit it to a x plus b, then what is the best choice of a and b? Suppose you want to fit it to a parabola, what is the best choice of the parameters of the parabola? So, uh, 
again uh, I emphasize that uh, you know the same data can be fit to different functions and in each case the linear regression analysis will give you the best fitting function. Okay. So, I um, will end this uh, module here. So, in these four lectures we have covered, uh, we have looked at several different topics starting from errors, uh, sources of error, precision, measurement, accuracy, significant figures. We looked at probability, probability distributions, we looked at the binomial and the Poisson distribution. Then we looked at the Gaussian distribution and we calculated integrals and averages. And then, and then we, we, we saw the process, the procedure of estimator of parameters where we talked about uh, errors and we talked about the least square fit method. So, so uh, I hope uh, through all these uh, steps, I mean there is an underlying theme that is there in all these is that uh, you imagine that your experimental results or your data is some sort of random variable that is distributed according to some distribution. And uh, once you have that underlying uh, picture, then all these procedures are, uh, they follow very naturally. Okay. So, in the next lecture what I am going to do is I am going to do a few practice problems on these topics. Okay. So, that will be for the next lecture. Thank you.